To use the jig, you adjust the bar in and out and you adjust the disc back and forth until you get the correct angle of the knife. Hey folks, we've got another guest video. My dad has made another jig for the Tormex style sharpeners. This one is for sharpening knives and uh, it works great. The little man and I made uh, one of these jigs based on my dad's plans and we put it on the Harbor Freight knockoff of the Tormek and uh, sharpened up a knife and, and it works really well. I'm very pleased. So check out this video and let us know what you think. Thanks. Hi, I'm Jack. Welcome to my shop. This is the second in a series of videos I'm making about sharpening jigs for my wen sharpener. There's a link in the description to the first video that we made and we'll be adding links to all the other videos as we make them. This jig and all of the others will work on any sharpener that has a jig bar like this. Today I'll show you how to make a knife sharpening jig. This jig will work with small kitchen knives, medium ones, and even larger ones as long as they are not flexible. At the end of the video I'll go over how you could modify this jig for long flexible knives like fillet knives. To make this jig you'll need four pieces of hardwood, a five inch piece of three eighths inch threaded rod, two one quarter inch bolts, a three eighths tap and a one quarter inch tap, and drill bits of thirteen sixty fourths, one quarter, five sixteenths, and three eighths. I've used my table saw, band saw, drill press, and lathe, but all of this could be done with hand tools. Let's take a look at the jig. The jig has a clamp at the front that holds the knives. The clamp top has a quarter inch hole where the front bolt goes through and then it's threaded into the bottom piece. The back hole is a threaded quarter inch hole and that bolt pushes against this pressure plate to clamp the jig in. It has a uh, shaft on the back, an adjustment shaft. It has this adjustment disc here to adjust it closer or farther away from the, from the uh, sharpener. And it has a locking nut here. I've used these quarter inch bolts that are used in knockdown furniture because they have a, a low profile head. You can use any quarter inch bolt that has a low pro profile head. There's a link in the description to free templates and measured drawings that you can use to make the jig. There are both imperial and metric versions available. I've got a piece of ash here that's three quarters of an inch thick and two inches wide and about eleven and a half inches long. We're only going to be using the first three inches here but we're leaving it long because I'm going to be putting it in my mortising jig. This is the front of the the jig. This is the part that will be closest to the wheel and it's the part that has a notch for the other half of the jig and it's where the knives are going to be clamped. We want that at the end of the board because we're going to be cutting the mortise in the next step. Right now what we're going to be doing is drilling a 13 64ths hole here and then we're going to tap it. I'm not going to drill the bigger hole until later. I'm threading the hole with a 1 quarter inch tap. I have the tap in my lathe tailstock so that it overhangs my lathe table. There was not enough clearance over the lathe bed. I like to have the tap fixed and rotate the piece when the pieces are smaller. After the hole is tapped, I like to run some thin CA glue in the threads and let it harden. Don't use accelerator. We want the glue to soak in. This will toughen the wooden threads and make them last longer. After the CA glue is dry, carefully run the tap through to clean out any excess glue. I've set the height of the table saw blade to the depth of the notch and I'm using a Morrison jig to cut the piece. Before I cut off this piece here, we're going to take a 1 8 inch drill and drill it through here just far enough to mark the center of this recess. This recess will be for the pressure plate for the second bolt. More about this later. With the table saw set to the right height and using a cross cut sled, I'll cut out the waste. Now I'll drill a shallow recess to hold the 50 centavo coin that I'm using as a pressure plate. I'm using an 18 millimeter bit but you'll have to find the right size bit for whatever you're using for the pressure plate. Something about the size of a dime is about right. The piece goes back into the mortising jig to cut the taper at the front. The angle is just over 18 degrees. You can line up your saw blade with the template on the side of the piece. On the table saw, use a cross cut sled to cut the waste. 
clamp the piece to a piece of scrap wood to keep it vertical and drill a 3 8 inch hole 5 8 inches deep for the adjustment shaft. Now I can epoxy the 50 centavo coin in the recess and then epoxy the 5 inch shaft in the hole I've just drilled. I'll use a small piece of scrap wood to keep it parallel to the table and I'll make sure the shaft is also parallel to the sides of the piece before the epoxy hardens. Now for the top of the clamp I'm using the same piece of wood. I just cut this off here. I'm using the same piece of wood and I've put a template on the face and one on the side. The diagonal should point down that way, not that way, down that way. Okay? I'll drill a one quarter inch hole at the front of the jig and a 13 64 hole at the back. Now I can clamp the piece in the mortising jig and cut the bevel. Again matching the line in the template at a bit more than 18 degrees. I set the table saw fence to 3 8 of an inch and I'll cut the piece to its final thickness. Then using the crosscut sled, I'll cut it to its finished length. Then like the other piece, I'll tap it, run CA glue in the threads, and clean the threads out once the glue is dried. I've attached the top piece with the front bolt and now I'll use a 1 quarter inch threaded rod that I've sharpened to a point and I'll screw it in until it makes a mark on the coin. Using a countersink bit, I'll drill a small dimple in the coin for the bolt to seat in. This will keep the top of the clamp from twisting when it's tightened and put more pressure on the knife. Now I'm going to make the knob for the back hole of the clamp. I have a piece of mahogany that's about one and a half inches square and I'm going to turn it to three quarters of an inch. Then I'll drill a one quarter inch hole through it and then part it off. This should be about one half inch thick when it's finished. Using the same kind of bolt as I did in the front hole, I'll glue it into the knob I just made using a nylon washer so it doesn't all stick together and then a regular washer and a nut to clamp this knob together. Once it's cured, I'll remove the nut and washers. And then I'll sand a point on the bolt. I have a piece of wood about two inches thick between centers. I'll turn it with my roughing gouge to a bit larger than two and a half inches then I'll turn a spigot on it about two inches in diameter and then mount it in my chuck and finish turn it to two and a half inches in diameter. Then I'll round over the front corner, drill a 5 16 inch hole all the way through and then I'll make the thread with a 3 8 inch tap and then part it off. I've put a two inch diameter piece of oak in my chuck and I'm going to shape the locking nut from it, rounding over what will be the back edge of it and then turning what will end up being the front down to a bit over one inch. Then I'll drill a 5 16 inch hole and thread it with a 3 8 inch tap and part it off. Set the knife in the jig so that the blade is parallel to the to the jig and it's centered in the jig. Then you want to snug the front screw down and then tighten the back screw and that wedges it in and gets it nice and tight. To use the jig, you adjust the bar in and out and you adjust the disc back and forth until you get the correct angle for the knife. Then you turn on your machine. With the wheel turning away, slide it, slide, slide it back and forth. And at the end, use your adjustment disc to pivot it and get the curve. And you flip it over. Do this side. And that's it. If you have a long flexible knife, you'll want to make a custom jig. This jig is identical except that this is wider. You want this width to be about uh, the length of the straight part of the knife you want to sharpen, minus about half an inch. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. We'll be making more videos, so don't miss them. If you have comments, questions, or suggestions, please post them below.